unusual medium tank with its turret mounted in the back. Such a design requires increased In the second rank for the Soviets, a 34 combat. series MiG-3 with the the an AM-35A engine. engine. Even though it's slower than the French, it is still M71 low. Engine. Dovrezhin, Dovarish, welcome once more to the Russian Bias Podcast, episode three. It is it has been too long. It has been far too long. In fact, we actually had an episode that was supposed to come out on Memorial Day, and then the the YouTube copyright robot and my uh, naivety pretty much just looked at the video and said, uh, hmm, you're, yeah, you're not you're not doing that, buddy because there were clips and stuff from movies and whatnot in there, and that that just did not sit well with the YouTube copyright robot, unfortunately, and uh, a variety of other things have kept us from putting together a proper episode in a while. But we're finally here. Of course, Matt here certainly did not help with his crackle barrel munching. <clears throat> Your it was mouth. delicious. I'm sure it was. Anyway. Have a sip of water there, alright. To wash down my, uh, to wash down the hash browns that I didn't get to eat. Yep. Of course, yeah, he, of course he Cracker Barrels, d d come to think of it, Cracker Barrel isn't really a thing, like, in, uh, in other parts of the world, isn't it? Other parts of like 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 define other parts of the world. Well, it's isn't it just like primarily a southern thing, or am I completely uh, like... well? Well, it's based on a southern thing, and uh, honestly, I have no idea. But I don't know. Whenever I've that's traveled up north, look, that's something I need to look up. Yeah, but point yeah, being, probably so. But... Point being, if anyone, if any of you viewers have not actually had the privilege to eat at a Cracker Barrel, holy crap, you are missing out. Truly, you are. Anyway, let's get to it. <laughs> So aside from delicious hash browns, we got some other delicious discussion topics for this week, because we've been kind of out of the loop for a while, and we have a lot to talk about now. Uh, we got the 9.1 update, with a rather bizarre release Finally. for the North American community, that's that's for sure. Uh, some musings on the War Thunder dev blog, including, but not limited to, a very bizarre uh, premium plane, a reskinned premium plane... Which is a little odd. Anyway. And E3 has come and gone, but we're not really going to talk too much about the stuff that went on at E3, because that's not the uh, discussion topic of the show. Rather, one Armored Warfare de being developed by Obsidian Entertainment cropped up and got people's attention. So that's what we're going to be talking about on this episode of Russian Bias. But first of all, before we get into that... <sighs> Matt... We need, we need to clarify something really important here. Don't okay. Me. I think so. Okay. I Russian think, bias. I think... The title Russian bias, folks, is half-jokingly stated. Like, we're, 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 some, people seem to have, seem, some people seem to have the impression that we're, like, waging a war on Russian bias as like a thing in video games and and that's and that's not really the 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 case uh like i think i think matt when when i when i pitched the title russian bias we were we were pretty much in agreement of it because we figured that was just something that the that the community just kind of collectively joked about yeah you know like i mean like cuz every time like someone would mention russian bias like to you or me we just kind of be like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh that's funny that's funny and, and and while there are examples of the this this Russian bias or, or whatever, uh, I really don't think it's as big as a scale as 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 a lot of people are making it. Mm -hmm. uh, and but that's not why we're here. Like, like as, as you were saying, that's not why we're here. We're here to talk about the things. Uh, we're not here to talk about the Russian bias. If we were here to talk about the Russian bias, it'd probably be like one episode. About just the Russian bias, yeah, which, like, would, which not, would have, not gonna have which would have 
the, like, the main title that. Russian yeah. bias and subtitle Russian bias. <laughs> and it would be good. All right. But now there may be a day where there is such a thing. Today on this episode, uh, they, here's the shit Gaijin pulled this time. Ugh. Yeah. There, there may be <laughs> a day not- where there is something like that. But it is not this day. Or here's the shit that Wargaming yeah. pulled. Ugh. Russian bias. That, that, that's, not, that's not what we're trying to do. That's not the point of the show. So, folks, while there were certainly some people who were advocating that, I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> there were some people who were quite pleased with the idea of a show that, that is specifically made to point out Russian bias in Russian-developed World War II vehicular combat games. I don't, I don't know why, but <laughs> sadly, folks... If you are part of that contingent, no hard feelings here, but this isn't the show for you. <laughs> I mean, you're you're more than you're more than welcome to continue to per- to uh, partake in our fun little endeavors here on this channel. But once again, that that that's not that's not that's not what we're trying to do. We're here to talk about games. We're here to talk about video games and some of the community developments that go on between them. And sometimes the developers do something kind of silly because they're only human. And we point it out, and we move on. And we can all laugh at it. Yeah, we laugh at it, and then we move on. You know, we make a we make a stupid video mimicking a, a, a Gaijin PR, put it on Reddit, somehow get almost 10,000 views, uh, make a podcast about it, and then upload it on Reddit again, and then get yelled at. Yep. Reddit, I, I, I love you, and I hate you at the same time. I really do. I think anyway, everybody does. Let's, let's, let's get on with it. So, uh, the first topic... That we're going to dive into here, that bloop bloop you hear there, is our new experimental device that I have concocted specifically for this show. It's called a timer. <laughs> it's on my phone. I didn't make it. Anyway. So, um, 9.1. Suffice to say, 9.1 is finally here, and it's great, but it had kind of a strange release for North America. Yeah. Just a, little, just a tad. Just a tad bit. Because it came out... Obviously, it came out on the Russian server uh, beforehand. And then it came out on and the, the European the, server. The European server. Yeah. But it took, it took like, how many days for it to come out on the North American server? Let's see. If... Do not, do not quote me because I'm just thinking off the top of my head. I believe it was five, maybe six days. It's almost it was, a week. It was released... No, it was a week. Yeah, it was last... I'm fairly certain it was last Tuesday. Yeah, so a week. Maybe. Yeah. If that's the case, then. That, that has that happened? Has that happened before? I'm confused. Not that I can remember, or not that I've noticed. Uh, I don't know if this was because you know I was really paying attention to this patch. I was I was waiting like like I'd wake up one morning and go, I wonder if the World of Tanks patch is out today, and then I'd go in the World of Tanks client, and no update. And I was like, well, well, okay, that's that's kind of odd, but oh, you know, whatever. Uh. But I don't know. Some, it just seemed really strange to me. I think, and the reason that was given, I I think, was that E3 was going on, and uh, you know they just they wanted to focus on E3 and they wanted to focus on which, which, you know showing off all the things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, and obviously you're probably going to have some of the the higher ups from from the studios going there. You know, in your different. You know, and whatever. I, I don't know what all goes into it, but you know, maybe maybe you know they were probably like understaffed and overseeing you know the the server updates, and and I understand that, and I and okay, but I mean to to release it a week after, like our, our European friends have been having fun playing the 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 football thing that they put in there, the football game where you have the T-62A sport. Well, Americans and, and don't really care about football. I'm sorry. No. Soccer. Well, well, okay, okay. But even taking that, I've played this game. Amer- mode. Americans this is, don't really like care about soccer much. <laughs> soccer, which was a term that originated in England. England, which I'm saying for emphasis, because... Europeans like to make fun of us for saying soccer, but the term originated in England. That really thick. That thick. under my skin. That gets under my skin. Okay. okay. Anyway, so I had I had to, I had to let that out real quick since it got. Okay, out. but 
But anyway, I am I am extremely jealous that they've been having this much fun because like I downloaded I downloaded the patch today, and I've been having monstrous amounts of fun playing the the football on on World of Tanks. Like it's it's like it's like not like playing a regular match fun. It's just like teamwork fun it's, that it's I usually fun little, don't experience. Yeah. Fun pick me up. <laughs> you know, like people are working together and, you know, and trying to move the ball. Like we're all united in one goal. Whereas in like random <laughs> battles, you know, you end up, <laughs> okay, whatever. I don't, I don't care. Anyway, oh, whereas in random battles, you probably find, you find all sorts of people, you know, doing all sorts of their own objectives that they put on the map. I'm going to take this corner single handedly, even if it kills me. And it and always does. Them. Yeah. <laughs> so good job. I, I mean, it, it's. I mean, it's. I. This is the most fun I have had, and it's not even like just like a, a normal part of the game. You know, it's an event. <laughs> but but yeah, I've I've been watching it on uh, on Cookie Baby's uh, videos. Uh, you know, you you take a party of three in there, and you just have a blast. You know, just uh, you know screaming no as the ball gets closer. Uh, to your goal, and you're like, no, 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 and then yes, 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 as it gets closer to theirs, and and you know, it's and it's crazy, and it's wonderful, and I'm and I was kind of mad that I didn't get to play it earlier, you know, because I've I've been I, having I, I, yeah, fun. I like the fun little pick me up games like that because they're they're just a nice refreshing little change of pace, you know. This is something different, something for fun, kind of like what they did with the April Fool's joke with the uh, with the Carls. Oh right, Carl <laughs> I didn't even get to participate that was, in that. I was so that was sad. Funny. That was funny, but the world, the world cups, the world cups, that's going to be going on for quite some time. So yeah, yeah. So hopefully this will stick around for and a little one, bit. This is one, the, the one year that I'm actually like kind of somewhat following what's going on, because I knew that uh, Ghana and America had a rivalry going on, and then we managed to get that two to one. Woo! Yeah. Sorry for any. Sorry, for any, I don't know. people. I don't know the word to describe <laughs> someone of Ghana. Someone from Ghana? I don't. <laughs> I'm sure someone will like post it in the comments, and then that comment will be rated up like 30 times, and, okay. so, and we'll uh, see sorry, it. Sorry, sorry, Ghana. I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not even going to. People from Ghana. G there we go. Galifianakis. <laughs> <laughs> It's a Greek name. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, man. Yeah, despite, okay. despite the fact that Americans might not be too interested in, in, in soccer slash football. It's, I, you know, I, I, I like stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. It's cool. It's really nice. And, and, this, and this update um, seems to be a lot about, like, like fun stuff. Because uh, there was another yeah, one that they, that they kind of threw yeah. in. It's, it's kind of like a, like a, like a brush-up patch. They had... Uh, one it particular is. feature that's pretty cool: the marks of excellence. Where you have like the uh, like the stripes on the barrel of the gun, depending on how many uh, asses that player kicked with that nation, <laughs> which I find really cool, because there hasn't really been much of a way to distinguish that unless you load up XVM and then you go like, oh gosh, well, guess we're gonna lose this one. <laughs> you know, you see like all the tomatoes or whatever the the unicums. Yep. <laughs> Veg vegetables, onions. <laughs> vegetables. <laughs> and then there was uh, there was that, you know, fun stuff like that, and then there was a new map, Kharkov, which is reminiscent of Ruinburg, except it's not Ruinburg. It, it, it looks a lot right. like Ruinburg. Like, well, doesn't it? It does. I mean, it looks like Ruinburg. Uh, except, I don't know, it seems a bit more open- uh, in places, like as yeah. as counter as counter yeah in, t in places I'm about to say as counterintuitive as that is for like a quote unquote city map, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know <laughs> I, I actually I have not played it yet I've tried to get into a match with it I have not found one yet uh, I will darn you matchmaker matchmaking mm all that good stuff. Uh, but it does seem like a very interesting map, and I think I will enjoy it if uh, if it's anything like what it seems. Uh, as I, for the I rest like those of the kind maps, of like hybrid maps where they, where you have like the urban sector, and then you you have like more open spaces where you can kind of like mix yeah, up yeah, it's a got bit. something for everybody. Yeah, 
Yeah, because that way it's not it's not like an art like on an urban map. If you're an artillery, like what's the one like? Uh, was it a uh, Himmelsdorf? Yeah. If, you, if you're an artillery on Himmelsdorf, it's just like well. You got. Okay. You, know, you're, you're just, you just kind of sit there and you're just like, oh. okay. Well. <laughs> I guess I guess if I I guess if I move up here a little bit. No, nope, no, nope, I can't. No, nope, there's a, there's no, a I can't, I can't church, do that. there's a church steeple. Nope, that won't work. Uh, darn it. You know, it's time, anyway. it's time, it was times like that where you kind of wish the game was a little bit more destructible in terms of level design, but yeah, which I think they they're trying to work towards that. Now, I'm fairly certain they're not going to make it possible to level the city maps. Right. Like completely. But, you know, maybe some of the corner buildings or some of those half-destroyed buildings, maybe they'll work towards some of those and be like, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's crumbling anyway. You know, maybe they should be able to destroy that one. But but, but I digress. But yeah, in, um, in, the, in the lieu of making things a little bit more dynamic and kind of mixing things up a little bit, the major structural update that they had in 9.1 was to adjust the matchmaking for light tanks a little bit. I believe it's now on a three-tier spread as opposed to a four-tier spread. Something like that. Which is still odd. Uh, but I can see where they're going with that. Where but, they're kind of like testing it out as they go along. I mean, if they, long, had if they had some, if they had like tier ten light tanks, you know, then it'd be then it'd be different. And yeah. you know, then I just say, well, why not just a two-tier two spread? You know, because because of the tiers of light tanks. But. Uh, they uh, they've also well, China, increased China and Russia uh, China and Russia China and France they they both have light tanks that I think their their trees go up to tier up eight. to tier eight yeah yep right uh yeah yeah they do <laughs> uh anyway and and the other uh, the other well it's not really a small change but it is a change uh, is to the MT twenty five and the VK two eight zero one which are I mean, that's the Russian and the German light tanks, which generally were not that popular. Uh, MT-25, which... Same with the oh, gosh, that was the matchmaking for the H-20, I believe. Yes, I'm, I'm reading it right here. Two okay. upper battle levels removed. Okay. Well, that's nice for A-20 drivers, because, yeah, no one likes to play that. Uh, if, if there are such a thing as A-20 drivers. Yeah. Left, at least. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an anyway. A-20 driver, and... No. I'm, I'm sure you're great yeah. stuff. Uh, but anyway, uh, the 2801 uh, and the MT-25 have both received a uh, pretty good soft stat increase uh, for their uh, traverse uh, over different terrain, uh, as well as I think the MT-25 has basically been up to the standard of the old T-25, or not T-25, <laughs> the T-50-2, uh, which I think a lot of people were – probably kind of angry about because the T-50-2 was just the rocket. You know, I mean, you could, I mean, that was the scout tank of, of that tier. You know, it was fun. It was, it was, it was really fun to play. And then they got replaced by, you know, while not slow, slower MT-25. And I think, you know, buffing that for, and buffing the uh, 2801. <laughs> of course, of course, they, <laughs> Of course, they also helped out their German friends with the 2801, which, uh, while it wasn't a pile of junk, it was, you know, t not not too good. Uh, they were better. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. It's That's the story of, of a lot of the tanks in the German tree, where it's just like, it's like VK3001H. Is it a terrible tank? No. Right. Would I rather be in a KV-1? Oh, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. I'm I'm really I'm really really glad that they're starting to go in that direction because until I mean, I mean like light tanks have been kind of th their role has been kind of diminished over the course of several patches, kind of like a power In ways. Because I mean like it's like oh well well light tanks they they get view range but okay cool there are still the tanks that they're tiered they get the same view range as the light tanks anyway usually. So what's the point? Yeah, which is why there's probably not light tanks at yeah, the higher I mean, what, tiers. What's, what's the point? Okay, cool. You move fast and you get full camo value on the move. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, as soon as you get like like slightly out of line, you're gonna get spotted and then like laser TD'd anyway. Yeah, which that, that which 
Ghost Squire light yeah. tank drivers have a lot of skill. Mm-hmm. Like I haven't like if you'll know a bad light tank driver uh, like very quickly, and you'll know a very good light yeah. tank driver very quickly. I mean, it's, I mean. They separate I, I, I the had men the from the boys. Time, like so I, I just like I could not wrap it around my head trying to drive the ELC AMX for the first time. Cause like I wanted to drive the thing like like a cruiser Mark III. Right. And I and I was like, all right, yeah, I, I, I move really quick and I can do like all the like this like this shoot and scoot kind of thing and I could like make you know like, hit and run and then I would I would get blapped and I'm like, what? what? This this isn't fun. What do you like? What? Kevin, Matt, what? How do you have fun with this? I don't, I don't understand. This is ridiculous. You just, you just drive around, then you get blocked, and then they, they, they showed me how to actually like drive the dang thing, and it's fun. Right. But that's like the ELC, that's the ELC AMX. It's just fun tank to play. But there are a lot of light tanks that don't suffer from that, or not suffer, but they don't, they don't benefit from that fun, funness right. to them, like that wacky. Little, from the funness. Yeah. And and light and light tanks. I mean, it's just like, would you rather play a, a, a scout, quote scout, or a medium tank, which can kind of pretty much do the same thing, but more effectively, you know? And with more survivability. Yeah. So, good good stuff for light tanks. Keep adjusting that. Maybe we'll get to see them uh, come back into the uh, the woodworks. Maybe we'll see some tier ten light tanks someday. Maybe. Maybe. Just a thought. Can, we can pray. Just a thought. Anyway, uh, we should move on to the next topic. So, uh, 9.1, cool stuff, kind of just a uh, mostly an internal, uh, you know, br- br- brush things up kind of update. No, nothing particularly wrong with that. So let's take a look at what Gaijin's doing. Because we all know that we love to talk about Gaijin on this show. Absolutely. On the uh, the dev blog, and and War Thunder hasn't really been doing a whole lot as of patch 1.41. Some minor updates here and there. People getting mad about battle rating changes and whatnot, which is usual with bat with the battle rating system. Yeah, nothing, uh, nothing's changed yeah, about nothing, that. Nothing really changed about that. But there have been some musings on the dev blog, and if I'll take a look here, as I pull it up on my screen, the first thing you'll see when you go to the dev blog is some information that they published on their KI-27, early tier Japanese fighter. Very pretty looking plane. It's a it's certainly a very nice addition to the Japanese Air Force tree, which has been severely lacking in staple like single engine fighter planes for quite some time now. The most recent they got being the KI-84. Now, Japan, early tier, they really don't have a whole lot aside from the A-5 and the KI-43. Uh, which I believe the, uh, I believe both of those are, are an Era 1, aren't they? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still thinking of the old system. I remember no. like the A-5 was a tier yeah, 1 and right. the KI-43 was tier 2. But right. they're, they're still in like that same area. But this is cool. Area, yeah. I like this a lot because, and and I know some people may look at this and go like, "Oh, well, it's not an A7M. It's not a, it's not a J2M." The thing about this is that it shows that Gaijin is 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 still taking a look at what's going on with their release tree to a degree, mind you. I mean, they're they're still they still got still got problem. I still got problem. But this this is a good step in the right direction right here. I was quite pleased to see this because uh, there needs to be more of of a of a diversification within the trees of every single nation. It needs to be a more divisible line between certain types of planes. You can't just mix and match uh, various planes that were in various branches and whatnot. Uh, and this this especially goes for America and Japan. It gives players a little bit more flexibility when they go down the line. Do you want to go through the the naval fighter line, which generally is a little bit more is a little bit more engine heavy, at least for the Americans anyway, but you know, a lot a lot more boom and zoom oriented, long range capabilities, that kind of thing. Or do you want to go army fighters, which are like high altitude escort types of planes? Because 
packs serious armament yeah, sometimes. Yeah, like the P fifty one and the uh, the F six Hellcat are the planes that kind of come to mind for represent representing those two different areas. Uh, but it's good for this kind of stuff to be implemented because it, for one, it properly represents how the army used its assets, and two. It, again, it just, it just gives the player more flexibility and it adds a little bit more uh, strength to the metagame as a result. So that way, you know, it's, it's, it's more streamlined. It's, 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 just, it's just nice. It's a nice little plane to throw in there to kind of spruce up things a little bit. Patch things up a little bit for the Japanese because they've been, let's be honest, they haven't really been given a lot of love lately. They've been neglected. If, if, if much at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but they got the KF-45 co cockpits in the last update. Oh, well, that's great. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And did you hear about those changes in simulator battles? Oh, yeah. Don't even get me started on that. It's like, oh, hey, uh, you just, you're just a pilot, right? Yeah. Um, look here, buddy. Uh, here, here's the thing about you. Uh, <laughs> uh, moving on Where with that. Became the Joker. <laughs> Moving on with that. So yeah, good good stuff. Uh, keep keep. Okay, again in the la in the last video, I remember us blatantly saying slow down on the content. But if it's good content, okay, cool. Yeah, keep it coming. Yeah, yeah, keep yeah, it coming if, if it's, it's good. If you put, if you put it, it in the right place, bad, yeah, like, like it had been. But... If you put it in the right place, like this shows that they're actually taking a look at the meta game. When I when I said add more content, I meant look at the meta game first. And then add content. This demonstrates yeah. that they've done that, and that's good. I like it. I like it. And then, I don't like this. <laughs> because in true Gaijin fashion, they always find a way to make something really, really cool and then throw in just an additional, like, they sneak in something that's just like, what, huh? Uh, <sighs> they have, um, and, th and this is something that, that was a little shady for some people, which I actually defended Gaijin on. Uh, was the KV-1B with the uh, the finish camouflage? It's a premium tank that's being added for the Russians, and it's it's a KV-1 with finish markings on it, a different gun, like a German gun. Okay, big deal. You know, you got you got fun little premium tank to kind of spruce things up a little bit. It's different from what you normally get. It's not a reskin. It's different. It's 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 a yeah. It's it's it's, it's acceptable as a premium item. Right. Show it, yeah. I'll show a picture of it on the screen here, real quick. And then you have this fucking thing. This is the this is the this is an HS one two nine. This is a, it's a duck. It's the uh, it's 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 the death quack. It's the death quacker with the uh, with the big old cannon underneath the. Uh, I don't know if that's, is that thirty seven mil. Yeah. No, seventy five. <laughs> seventy five. Oh, so three, oh. That, that's that's very, the big one. The big big cannon. Big old seventy five millimeter cannon underneath. Right there, on the HS129. Except if you look at it really closely, but not even really closely, you see the weird, the very weird-looking like yellow crossy thingies. Those are uh, those are Romanian Air Force markings. I, what, Romania? Who's that? On a... uh, <laughs> Roma Roma Romanian Air Force markings, uh, which which of course is a cool little addition because uh, Romania, along with other nations under uh, Nazi Germany's whole. Uh, European capture everything sort of deal uh, was allied with them during that during that combat at least the official Romanian government at the time and they were flying German planes in their own individual air forces and that kind of thing <sighs> except here here's the, here's the thing that I don't like about it and I, I'm just I, it's a reskin plane and they're charging for it. Well, basically, I think so what confused. it's there for. Oh, but I think wait, what it's there for. But wait, Greg, is... <laughs> you get the premium bonuses and stuff, but it's just a reskin plane. Whatever. What happened to just adding in skins? Like, are we not adding skins in anymore? Oh, but that we have the community to do the skins for. It. Yeah, but that's on client side. I mean, you know, just show a little bit of like they, they they've neglected skins so much. It's kind of, it's kind of saddening. They've they've kind of neglected their own like skin system, which which I really don't like. Because it used to be, the way with skins, it used to be that, like, you, you put your, you know, you worked your butt off to get a particular skin, and then when you went off into combat, everyone looked at you and they are like, oh, 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 shit. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Oh, Look snap. at this guy. Yeah. 
And they, they looked at it, they looked at this really crazy looking skin, and they're like, oh crap, this guy's good. And then kind of, you know, that was cool. I mean, and now, now, Billy, go, go, you know, he asks his mom for, for... Billy, ten, where are you, Billy? Billy, he go ask his mom for ten bucks on, on his credit card, and then he flies this thing around, and then, you know, everyone's not, yeah, it's just like, eh, whatever, okay, in Romanian. Why couldn't they just add this uh, as, as a skin? Well, so I think... I think what its purpose there is, a lot of people like the the big old cannon duck. Do they? And they and they said and they said to Gaijin, they said we want the big cannon duck. Well, do you want to go down the German tree to get it? No, we will pay you money to give us that plane. And I said, wait, you'll give us money? And they're like, yes. So they said, okay. And so people are giving them money to get the duck, rather than rather than buying Matt, golden I eagles. Doubt people actually free like it. wanted <laughs> wanted to get the duck through unconventional means. I don't know. I'm having a hard time believing that. I don't know. There's I know a lot of people that they really don't really? like spending time playing games. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I see them all the time on World. Of, it does seem odd, but I guarantee you there are people out there like that. I, and yeah, while, yeah. Well, that may not be the main reason. It, I feel like it could be a reason. But why don't they do that for like every other other plane in the game? I don't know. Like Maybe a lot of people want to play the M262. Why don't they make a premium M262? Well, a thing about it that I've seen on some other videos as well over YouTube is that the HS129 is very popular uh, as a tank destroyer. Uh, That's fair enough. You know, for example, in like uh, realistic battles, and people go into realistic battles with it and just derp the crap out of people on the ground with the giant cannon that's you know built for tanks. Basically, I mean, yeah, it is. It is a decent plane. I mean, you can do stuff with it. Yeah, right. I don't know. It's weird. Uh, I don't know. That was just. That's just. I don't think that's actually what happened, but I do think it, it's, it's, uh, it's like it's a possibility. You know, and there are definitely people out there that probably saw that. Money. Yeah, and uh, I believe that could get the money. That, I mean, well, yeah, people <laughs> will buy it. People, people got the freaking, yeah. uh, they got the Boston. Remember the Boston? Oh, right. It's like, you can only buy this, you can only buy this plane for three days. It's like, what, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. You see, like, this, but, is, the, this is the thing yeah. about Gaijin, right? It's like, it's, they, they have stuff. It's it, they have stuff like the Ki twenty seven and it's like cool, and then they have stuff like that and you're just like, huh? Yeah, <laughs> they've if, if I'm right, they did the same thing with the T thirty four and the T twenty six, which are based they have the exact same stats as the regular T thirty four and T twenty six at the same you know same tier or era whatever you want to call it, uh, but you know with all the premium bonuses. And and it's kind of the same thing. I'm not really sure why it's there. Uh, it just seems it just seems lazy. Get it. Like I I know that that's that sounds really entitled from a consumer standpoint, but it just seems lazy. It's like uh, we want to make a quick buck. Let's take this plane, put you know, put some put some emblems on it, and then play a premium plane. All right, here we go. Cool. Because I mean, this couldn't uh, have maybe, taken, maybe they... this couldn't have taken long to make. No, maybe you know, they maybe they looked at each other, you know, when they were about to release, you know, the, this little, you know, their their new update, and they thought, uh, I don't know, maybe we need something to give to them, you know, so you know, like so they a, scrapped like together IARA. what they could, and they're like, oh, re yeah, yeah, we'll that, put the we'll put yeah. the Romanian skin on it, and then we'll say like, well, if we were releasing plane to appeal to Romanian community. What about the IR already? <laughs> Why didn't? I'm pretty sure the Romanian audience, one of the IRR... I, 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 I don't know, this doesn't seem to be, like, a good point to it. It's the struggle. You know? I-A-R... The, the struggle's real. I-A-R-80. I-A-R-8. 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 India, Alpha, Romeo. India. <laughs> India, hey, Alpha, Romo, wait. <laughs> Romo? <laughs> India, India... <laughs> oh, dang it. India, Alpha, Romo. <laughs> India, Alpha, Romo... <laughs> Yeah, see, I got you saying In, it now, India though. Alpha Tony Romo 81. That was that was really bad, wasn't it? Yeah. That's okay. 
Matt's not a Matt's not a I was fan. I was bad right there with you. Matt, okay. Matt, Matt's not a Cowboys fan. At all. Is anybody a Cowboys fan? Nope. Except my math teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, we just ticked off a bunch of people yeah, right yeah, now. We did. But they all know we're right, all don't right, you? Up. Don't you? I know you're smiling out there. Mm, da bulls. <laughs> da bears. Okay, okay, okay. We got to be careful. We don't want to. There's some people we don't want to tick off. Da cubs. <laughs> all right. <laughs> there's some people we don't want to tick off here. Okay. So now that we're on the topic of da bear. Uh. We can talk about Russian bears, right? Russian, Russian bears. Yeah. No, um, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just wanted to make a stupid joke. Uh, E3 kind of went and gone. C came and went. That's a more proper way of saying it. E3 came and went. Nah, whatever. Whatever. And uh, we're not really gonna, we're not really gonna drool over E3 all that much because they're not really related to the show, like, like the show's topics themselves. Uh, I guess we can throw in uh, something or other. Okay, Master Chief Collection. That's going to sell Xboxes like hotcakes. Okay, can we just get that out of the way? Like, before we even get into anything, let's, let's just establish that it's, it's actually, like, the Master Chief Collection is actually one of the best things ever created by a human being. <laughs> can, we, can we get there? Okay, so we got that established, right? All right, yeah, yeah, we, we well, got your spiel out of the way. I didn't know you were an Xbox fan, Greg. Who am I? I feel so... Disillusion. No. I can hear it already. But, uh, that's cool. Aside from that, a bunch of other really cool stuff, all the AAA titles, uh, The Division. Lots of Tom Clancy stuff this year. Did you notice that? Sure, I'm very happy about because I love Tom Clancy. Yeah, Tom yeah, I miss Clancy him. Stuff. I miss him so much. I, I do too. I do too. He's last, a beast. last Memorial anyway. Day, I realized, was the last time that we'd ever had a Memorial Day without Tom Clancy. And that, that just, that was really, that just kind of And I cried manly tears that, as I read Rainbow Six that's, again. That stunk. I have The Hunt for Red October on my desk here. I'm actually looking forward to uh, reading it for the first time, because I never actually read it. I watched the movie. Good book. But I never, book. I never actually read the book. So that should be cool. All right. Armor Warfare, though. Anyway. Armor yes. Warfare had a debut at E3, and a lot of people are quite intrigued by it now, including myself. I think it's really cool that this game has come out at the time that it has, uh, because while uh, Gaijin and Wargaming have kind of been at war with each other, quote, uh, this game has just kind of come out and seen, it, it looks like they're going to mix things up a little bit. Kind of got, we got a kind of third party going on here. Yeah. That's neat. Uh, because they're offering, from, from what I can gather, a lot of very interesting things from a mechanics and progression standpoint. Mainly because the game is taking place uh, in modern day, with modern tech. So from a mechanic standpoint, it gives you the potential to do a lot of really cool things. Uh, like reactive armor, uh, guided missiles, that kind of stuff. You know, all, all the modern tech. Radar, night vision yeah. capabilities, that kind of thing. Uh, and then, from a progression standpoint, since the game takes place in the modern day, uh, there's no such thing, it's not broken up into like light tank, medium tank, heavy tank anymore. It's just main battle tank. And so, right. rather than just a game about tanks, it's a game about armored vehicles. And you have stuff like, uh, you have, um, heck, even APCs, uh, recon, like wheeled, wheeled vehicles, uh, artillery, SBGs, in addition to the main battle tanks that are already there. So, by breaking this game up into three main components, it looks like what they're doing here, with main battle tanks, recon vehicles, and SPGs, you get three very distinct play styles. Mm -hmm. Very distinct roles for players to choose from, and that gives the devs the capabilities. The capabilities from, like, from like a, a meta standpoint, you have a very solid formula here. You have a very solid formula here because every single part of the game can kind of work together to, to form a cohesive whole. You know? The main battle tanks. And, and Royal Tanks is one thing. I mean, you can, you can pretty much win a game with a whole team of heavy tanks. Okay, let, let, let's be honest. Here. Right. You know? You could. There, there's, nothing, there's nothing keeping you from just ma can, making a team consistent entirely of heavy tanks. However, this game looks like it's going to change things up a little bit because... I can see you winning with a team of main battle tanks, 
But I, I'm going to see that I think it's going to be very difficult to do against a team that's more coordinated with all three of the different elements combined. And that's how, that's how, this, you know, that's how that kind of combat actually works. Mm-hmm. I think I think it'll require a lot more a lot more skill than perhaps World of Tanks and War Thunder Ground Forces, Be- because I mean, with modern weapons like modern like cannons, those things can punch through like giant steel walls. Okay, like they they test these things to be able to penetrate anything it shoots at, and I think the trick is going to be either avoiding. Uh, enemy fire, or finding a way to perhaps angle against it, or you know, or, or like uh, reactive armor and different technologies like that. But I think you know, gone are the days where you can sit down in a hold down position in a T29 or a T34 and just watch shots bounce off your gun mantlet. You know, that, I don't think you know people will be able to do that. I think people will, have, will be forced to move more. Uh, because the idea of a main battle tank, it's not a heavy tank. You know, it doesn't really work like one. It works like a main battle tank. It's a different concept, and I think that's what's going to make it different. Now, the scout combination scouts, of firepower, scouts and reliability. Scouts. Exactly. And now the scouts, scouts are scouts. You know, the, the, I mean, there's not really much you can do about that. But these look like they're going to be a bit heavier hitters. Uh, for example, the one that was seen in this and the gameplay trailer. I'll throw that uh, on the screen for you guys. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the a one little, that's showing the gameplay trailer. It's a pretty neat little vehicle. It's in a uh, it's an Italian yeah. made thing, which I had a very intense debate about earlier today with my friends about. <laughs> I that is it's 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 called a uh, it's called a Centaur. It's a B B one B one Centaur, and it's pretty much it's a lot like a Striker. It's just it's a wheeled vehicle with with a big ass gun on it, and yeah, you can, it's got a uh, one hundred five millimeter gun. Yeah. And that's cool. I Which like can that probably because do some pretty as good opposed damage, to like the light tanks yeah. of old, I mean, like a light tank just didn't really. I mean, like a light tank was another name for we don't have a medium or a heavy tank, so we're stuck with this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's that's pretty much how it works. In worked. a lot of ways, you know, um, like like in the the Pacific Island hopping campaign, it was like okay, well, we're stuck with the Stewart. Because yeah, you know, we can't we can't put we can't put a patent on here. I mean, my gosh, you know, so. Or Pershing. Or, yeah, Pershing. It's derp. probably Mobby. <laughs> it's okay. That's why I got you here, right? But uh. Yep. That again. That's really gonna. That's really gonna spice things up a little bit from a meta standpoint because now we have three different roles that are gonna see a lot of usefulness, including SBGs. And there are a lot of people who were really concerned. It's just like, oh well, why is there SBGs? This game is ruined now. What? This is. If if if, there, if these okay, if this game doesn't have SBGs, if a game like this doesn't have artillery, it's just gonna be a freaking camp fest. Uh, that's uh, that's not gonna be fun. I don't know. That's gonna add something. It'll be interesting. I think it'll be a very interesting little game. And another thing that I really quite like about it, since it's taking place in modern day and it's based off of like real vehicles and that kind of thing, it, the conundrum that often happens with historical games is where the line is drawn for what you can include in the game from a historical standpoint. Because whereas one guy might look at the introduction of something like the tortoise as necessary for the game's meta, another guy is going to look at it and be like, Oh, it's a paper tank! You can't do that! Except, well, you can do just about anything here. Because it's, it's modern day. Pretty much. And since it's modern day, you get access to a lot more different types of vehicles all in the same branch. For example, main battle mm-hmm. tanks. I mean, there's hundreds of different types of main battle tanks. And they're all T-54, from different countries. T-54, T-55, yeah. T-60, T-70, T-72, T-80, T-90. Okay, I mean, we, there's, we there's start millions. Seeing, we can start seeing tanks from, like, Japan or South Korea, Israel. Uh, we can start seeing Israeli tanks, India, Sweden. Oh, that'd be awesome. Uh, of course, and we still have all the big, you know, the big heavy players there, like the USA, Russia, China. But it's going to allow a little bit more diversification within the progression system, I think. And... There's one thing that I hope that they... I'm, I'm kind of hoping that they don't do this with, with Armored Warfare. And I, I like the way it works in World of Tanks, and it's a good in that context. But here it's going to be a little bit odd. Rather than just having, like, different, like, factions of tech trees, I think it would make more sense to just have, like, a list of, pl- uh, of uh, tanks that you can unlock within a particular class, like MBT, Recon, Artillery. Uh, that you just kind of go down the line in terms of, like, a chronological order, rather than, rather than picking a particular... Uh, faction and just sticking with it 
Because there's going to be tanks that you're just not going to be able to... I mean, there's going to be factions where you just can't have a whole tech tree for them. Uh, yeah. But you will be able to include some really interesting designs here and there, like the Polish PT-91, the main battle tank that was introduced in the 90s, uh, the, uh, like some Italian tanks, the, uh, the Ariete. Uh, there's some Italian that just cringed when I said that. Uh, in terms of, you know, you got recon vehicles, of course, from, from different nations. Uh, self-propelled, bleh, self-propelled guns. I got, I got a little winded there trying to get out that, that full statement. <laughs> but, uh, that, that should be interesting. I think, I think the tiering, or, well, well, yeah, basically the tiering, they're probably gonna have to do something like that. As well as, uh, you know, like the matchmaking that they're gonna do, uh, for, like, different nations' vehicles. I think they'll probably have to revolve around the story that they're creating. Um, they you know, maybe, I mean, yeah. And I'm not sure what they're doing with it. Um, Which seems odd. Because from hey. yeah, from what I've seen though, they did have uh, what's what was traditionally like allied vehicles, you know, NATO forces on one side, and what looked like uh, Russian like BMDs on the other. Uh, but the artillery seemed to not be Russian, so that was a bit of a break in the in the continuity there. So I'm not sure what they're gonna do. Uh, you know, nation-wise, if they're just going to have, uh, you know, different nations be on the same team, like, for example, uh, Arcade in uh, War Thunder, uh, or World of Tanks, for that matter, uh, or if they're going to somehow mix it, you know, perhaps, like, with not realistic battles, of course, uh, but maybe, like, just have a teams based only on uh, nation. Uh, I don't know. Uh I'll, I'm waiting to see what story they're cooking up, uh, because it's Obsidian, and Obsidian, you know, has done some pretty good work in the past with story. Uh, Greg, I know you are like the biggest fan of Kotor 2 that I know, uh, and I love the game to death as well. Uh, yeah, he, he's doing the Darth Sion thing. If, if, you, if you couldn't catch that, all right. As as a side note, real quick, if you have not played Kotor 2, freaking scene. Of that, of that, like, time period. If you've not played KOTOR 2, message Greg. Greg will message me. I will buy KOTOR 2 for you. Don't actually take me up on that. I'll probably just be like, um, I'm kind of short on cash right now. Yeah, but seriously, it's amazing. I got, but seriously, I'm, I'm it's incredible. I'm saving up for a new mic. Saving up for a new comp. Oh my god! But anyway, uh, but anyway, Obsidian storytelling is 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 pretty good. They're good. Okay. Uh, yeah. And so I have I have very high hopes for this game's uh, story or its base, and perhaps they'll be able to implement that into the matchmaking that they have. And I hope they I hope that goes well for them. I really do. I think it's I think it's an interesting uh, development, and it's a new player uh, kind of in this. You know, armored vehicle. Uh, what's the term? It's not a Russian simulator. Russian developed game about military vehicles. Right, Russian developed games about well, yeah, about <laughs> war machines. Yeah. Uh, yeah. M sixty five atomic cannon, m- most OP. Oh boy. There we go. Mm-hmm. It just <laughs> game over. The, the, the balance is broken right there. We're, 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 just, we're just done. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that should, that should be interesting. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description for you guys if you're interested in signing up for the closed beta. Uh, first come, first serve, I imagine. But who knows? Maybe we'll get to be the founding members of a new identity. A new order. In the gaming sphere. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, that's just about all the topics, really. We've managed to cover all the ground today. Uh, in a size, in, in a reasonable amount of time for once, pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I think kind of wrapping things up. I think World of Tanks is going in the right direction from what I can gather so far. Uh, right now, they're just kind of sprucing things up a little bit, tidying things, keeping things neat, uh, graphics updates, that kind of thing, making sure things are are a little bit more optimized, tad bit more. You know, so now your toaster can run it just a tad bit easier. Uh, it's going in the right direction. Uh, War Thunder... 
come on. Come on, guys. Come on, Gaijin. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Again, it's like, it's like something comes out and it's just like, oh, hey, great. And then, and then it's like, what? What are you, what are you doing? What's, what's this? Oh, um, it, it's, uh, 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 it's like, it's like, it's like the MiG-15. I can remember the, the update they made for the MiG-15 in the last one. <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, hey, we, we fixed MiG-15. And then they throw in, they throw back in the original model. And then it's just like, hey, what, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, uh, gee, uh, yeah, uh, 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 uh. Glorious fascisti killer laser death cannon. Whoops. <laughs> Got us that time. <laughs> Fool me once. Shame on me. Fool me twice. Shame on me again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, War Thunder is doing that, and Armor Warfare looks pretty neat. But who knows? Maybe we'll be at, we'll, be, we'll be probably be talking about Armor Warfare quite a lot more on this show, uh, which I'm looking I forward so. to because I'm I'm looking forward to see the development of this game. Uh, I'm quite eager to see how it turns out. Okay, folks, uh, that was episode three of. Russian Bias, if you have any questions for Matt or I, be sure to leave them in the comments, and we'll see if we can get around to them in the next episode. That's a thing now, Matt. I didn't tell you about it. Uh-oh. Okay. You, you, We're going to be you answering don't, questions? You don't, you, don't, you, don't get a choice the, you don't get a choice in this matter, Matt. I can't handle the pressure! I own you! No. Okay. No, no, no you do. Okay, well, technically you do, but... <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> but Matt's a nice guy. I invited him on the show, so he's here. But yeah, uh... And no one else would do it. <laughs> but yeah, su surprise! New thing for the show, if you have a question, ask. And we'll answer. If you'd like to ask as a group, just Matt and I, or just me, or if just Matt, feel free to do so. Uh, that's a thing. And, uh, I'm having a hard time coming up with a concluding statement. So, I'm just going to, uh, abruptly lead us on out here with the ending sequence. That's be done, you comrades. Yeah.